Okay, in this video, I'm going to use watercolor washes to create a um, smooth background for my sky and kind of a very lightly detailed area for my background. So this is one of the fastest processes you might see in watercolor. Um, to do wet on wet, you've got to have paper that's either this drawing paper that's nice and thick or um, some nice uh, watercolor paper. Um, I do not suggest doing this on thin paper like um, sketchbook paper because that paper is very thin and the fibers are short, which means they don't hold together well when you rub water over them. Even on this paper, I think this is officially drawing paper. Um, it's thick drawing paper, so it holds up okay to the amount of water, but if I rub it back and forth a lot, I will end up getting um, this thing I call fuzzy paper. So I don't know if this shows up in the video, but um, yeah, it kind of does. Um, if you have enough water to do wet on wet, you will have um, kind of shining paper. If it's not shining, there's not enough water on it for the pigment of the paint to float around on the surface. So you want it to have this nice balance between enough water for the paint to float, but not so it spills at like, or it runs off the paper and gets everywhere. I was planning to do kind of a night sky. Um, so I'm gonna do kind of stripes of different colors, like uh, the sun has just set and um, the night sky is, it's kind of happening. So I'm kind of getting some purpley tones and some blue tones. Um, now the neat thing about um, wet on wet is that you can put some paint down and then you can let gravity do some of the work. Now, if you don't have enough water, what's gonna happen is that your um, paint is going to just soak into the paper, which can have its own kind of neat effects. I'm standing this up. I don't know if you can tell what I'm doing with the video, but I'm standing it up and I'm letting gravity pull my paint down toward the bottom of my wet shape. I can see I didn't have quite enough water. Now, if you have this problem that I'm having here, which is that I don't have quite enough water, um, I actually just added a little bit in. The other thing I'm watching for is, is the water drop, also known in watercolor circles as the bead. Um, you have to make sure that you pick up any big blobs of water or they will run down your paper. Now, if they're clean water, it doesn't actually matter if it runs down your paper, but if it has um, paint in it, then you might be getting colors running onto your other things. Um, the other way is to do this upside down so it just runs off the paper. For example, like this, you can see I'll be getting a bead right here at the corner where all the water and paint is collecting. And I could either take a brush and just kind of soak that right up or I can let it drip off into um, my cup. Sometimes it just rolls right off into the cup and that's kind of nice too. So as you can see, I'm getting a nice kind of gradation moving downward. Now I just put a little bit of paint in. Um, of course, if you just want a single color, it's really easy just to paint that in using your normal um, kind of watercolor wash techniques. But if you want a nice kind of blend of colors where it changes from one color to another, like I was envisioning, um, then this is a great technique because it just, uh, the pigment should, if your paper is nice and wet, it should float on the surface in a really delicate way. And, um, and kind of um, smooth out and it gets a lot smoother, especially the better quality watercolor paper you have, the better this technique works. I'm kind of regretting that I didn't start by using watercolor paper. Now, if your watercolor paper is the textured kind, you might get a little bit of texture from whatever the paper looks like. Um, I'm just pulling some of my color down because it doesn't, it doesn't actually work that well to lift it up and try to show you on this camera. Um, okay, there we go. So now I have a kind of sky zone in. Um, now, ideally, you want to wait to do this area. Um, but it's basically the same process. I'm going to get the area wet. Now, because my top area wet, I really need to make is wet. I really need to make sure that this area doesn't touch it, which is actually okay because I wanted my horizon line to be pretty white anyway. Um, so it's okay to not have, um, to have an area for mine that's white up there. Um, now remember with watercolor, you can paint and draw over it just fine. So um, it's okay to paint over things, especially if you're going kind of light. I was thinking of kind of doing like kind of a purpley dark green mountains out in the distance. So I'm mixing up that color. Um, 
in my paint tray. I want it to be kind of dark but pale because it's far away. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and create a little bit of texture here by putting these dots, and because the paper's wet, hopefully they'll all blend together in a nice way. I'm just gonna go around these trees. I painted over them, but I'm gonna try to make them a little bit more detailed. So I have a little bit of texture going on here, um, but hopefully it'll kind of blend out into the water and be relatively smooth in a few minutes. Paint does keep moving around for a few minutes as long as your paper's wet. Even if it's just a little damp, the paint can still kind of move around, which uh, you might like or you might, um, it might be, it might not create the effects you wanted, right? So you just kind of have to learn what the paint's going to do at each moment. I think I want it a little darker near the bottom, so I'm going to add some more dots of paint here, let them blend out toward the bottom. Now, it's a great skill to be able to get things to be really crisp, uh, crisp edged, but there's also that soft edge look that can really make things look great. I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this color just into other places to kind of give it some, um, some visual cohesion, meaning make it kind of match what's going on up there at the top. I'm just gonna add a little bit of this nice dark color to a few places so that it kind of connects um, with what's going on up there. And I get some nice light and dark that way too. So I'm just kind of adding into there. A little bit more here, never hurt. Never hurts to have some more nice dark areas up close, right? Because up close is where um, we expect to see the full light and dark. So because these are dry now, I can kind of paint over them, keep my little stripey things, and um, maybe add some shadow activity down here. Even though it's supposed to be moonlight, still helps to have a little shadow area, right? Okay. Okay, now there's some details that need finishing on this work, um, but uh, you can see that I have finished my background by using um, these techniques, okay?